Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are going to be sending Kerbolo 9, the official Kerbolo 9 is going to uh, the moon. Uh, it should be crewed by Lars and Looney Kerman. Um, we don't, we'll leave the third seat empty because it'll save us on fuel, it'll save, or save us on uh, life support because we don't actually need three people for the landing portion. We only need two, and we don't need somebody manning the space station because it's a fully autonomous space station. Anyways, I may have grossly overbuilt this thing. I have a habit of doing that, but I may be just a little RCS paranoid because I'm docking. Hopefully it doesn't impact my ability to fly too much. This is my hope. Anyways, without any further ado... Oh, and we're... We the biometric capsule on top of the command module is going to let me try and uh, do some biometric readings on the way up. So hopefully if I did miss a mission or a data set, I can grab that on my way through. But anyways, I've got a recycler on here. i got life support to spare. The hardest part about this is going to be actually getting to, to the uh, actual uh, ship. No, I didn't put struts. I forgot those struts. That might be okay. And ready to launch in three, two, one. Lift off. Here we go. Kerbolo 9. The real Kerbolo 9 is tipping and okay. I need those struts really badly. Okay, abort, 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 abort. Okay, come on, abort, 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 parachutes, whoa, whoa, boy, well, that was expensive, this is why we build space centers far away from everybody, and why they don't usually launch quite this close to command and control. Well, let's hope that we're coming down smoothly enough. I guess we'll see. Whoa! Well, the heat sheet bought it. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Just give me a minute to fix those struts and I'll be right back. All right, round two. Preparing for launch in three, two, one. I don't know if those quite did the trick or not. My strut placement might not be optimal. Come on. Oh boy, this thing's shimmying really badly. Okay, let's just slow her down a little. Wow. Things decided to be a real bugger, hasn't it? Well. We're working on it. I think we're almost at a stable launch angle here. I might have to record this one just in case though, but I'll cut here if nothing terribly horrifyingly exciting happens, in spite of the shifting and shimmying that this monster is doing. Funny. All right, welcome back. We have an orbit. It's an eccentric orbit, but I was a little late in one of my burns, and you know what? The important thing is, it's just out of the atmosphere, and that's enough to get us to the moon. So, for the moon, that is the part that matters. We need to get ourselves into a, just refreshing my memory, a clockwise orbit. So, so we need to thus burn in such a way that we wind up in a clockwork orbit. Okay, and that is a clockwork or a clock clockwise. What did I say? Did I say clockwork? I really said clockwork, didn't I? Beautiful. Look at that. That is a clockwise orbit around the moon at a reasonably. I don't know if I'm just getting better at picking when to leave, or if I'm just if I'm getting better at this in general. But that was kind of cool. Now the only thing I can't say for sure is exactly when I should be leaving to meet up with my spaceship. So. That's my, or my space station, but you know what? 
<sighs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. We're going to take a risk, take a chance, and see what happens. By the way, yes, I am fully cognizant of the fact that this ship has no RCS on it. Or no uh, solar panels. I did, I did actively decide not to put solar panels on this ship. Now, I probably went a little overboard with the RCS on this thing, but just with the amount of trouble I've had with um, docking in the past, it just seems like a sensible plan to uh, use it, shall we say. Okay. Let's uh, time accelerate. Let's quick save and accelerate time to our departure window. So it's a three minute and nine second burn, so we need to burn at a minute 30. T minus one minute and 30 seconds. Perfect. along quite nicely. So we'll start, we'll do our final adjustments in just a second here. Here we go. Get ourselves on our orbital departure. And in another 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, to the moon once again, preferably on the node of actual target. Because I forgot to put my SAS back on. Very funny lighting on this thing. It, oh, that's the sun going through the uh, holes. That's quite detailed, you know. That, the detail on that's quite something, actually, when you think about it. using just a tiny bit of monopropellant to keep ourselves stable here, but we got tons of it on this ship. Probably way, way more than we need, actually. So we'll definitely dump some of that and leave it at the uh, space station. Because I know I used a lot of it on my last visit. Should not need nearly as much for my return trip, although, depending on how much fuel this winds up using, I should be alright. <sighs> This is going to be really a hope and a prayer. If we can't make a docking attempt, uh, successful docking with the uh, station, we might have to abort the whole mission. Because even with our life support doubled up, we only have so much time before the batteries run out on people, you know, breathing. But we're not going to know till we get there. I'm hoping in this episode I can get our, us docked with the space station. That's sort of my goal for today. I have no idea how long it's going to take, though. This is going to be a hard one. But transmuter burns are not an unusual thing at this stage, so I might cut here if time is short and see you as we uh, get in, start trying to dock with our ship with our station at the moon. Okay, so yeah, I'll see you on the flip side. Maybe, depending on what I decide to do. <sighs> it's weird recording and not knowing exactly how I'm going to chop up the episode when all is said and done. Sort of flying blind on that front. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Go. This is really just a proof of concept of using a space station as a uh, dock. I just wish there was a way we could actually count, calculate a intercept within something in orbit around a target planet. Make sure our uh, departure window was appropriate. I guess you'd need some pretty sophisticated mods to do that, because that's the same thing NASA does. Yeah, so... 19, 18... Gotta watch my clock real carefully here. Keep it on the mark. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one. Perfect. I see it now. There we are. The word of the day is good enough. Okay. A little higher than I wanted, but that might actually work out in my favor. All right. I'm going to cut here and bring you back when we do our trans our lunar injection. Oh. Hello and welcome back. We are just preparing for, we've done our transmunar burn, or our lunar injection orbit, and we're just getting ready to clean up this horrifically eccentric orbit that I've got here. We're almost out of fuel in our tanks, unfortunately, so I'm not confident that this ship's going to be able to pull off what I want to do because I screwed up the uh, orbital burn. And I forgot to, well, at least I can get something out of this. We'll send that home. But you know what? We're going to try, because we've got fuel. None of these burns are especially long. So we're, we'll try. We'll try. We're actually at a position. we got lots of life support. We've only used 50 of 1,300 life support getting to the moon. So we do have time. And we're at a position where the space station should be catching up to us once we finish this burn. So 25 second burn means we need to start burning at T minus 10, 12-ish, 10-ish seconds. And I missed it. Well, hopefully we can still do it. This is just an attempt at flattening our orbit out a little. So, hopefully even though we missed it by a minute, uh, this will work okay. Yeah, we're still, it's, oh, it's going to be off, isn't it? All right, be right back. All right, round two. I already transmitted the data, so that's almost done. Remember to actually take the sample. Of course, I still forgot to take the sample over... Uh, Kerbin. And this time there's a quick save sitting right before my burn, which was a really foolish decision of mine. Okay, Let's stop. There we are. A whole hundred science. I mean, it's not a lot of science by the standards of the nodes I'm trying to buy right now, but every little bit helps. And sometimes you just need to go to the moon for your own confidence. So it's a 20 second burn. I should have just enough fuel left in these outer tanks, which I can eject, thank goodness. There's going to be so much garbage in orbit around the moon, though. Oh, my God. I don't know there's much I can do about the, it. All right, so burning at T minus 10. Close enough. All right, here we go. <sighs> SAS, come on, stay on. Eight, seven, six, five, four... Three, two, one, zero. Perfect. Or perfect enough, anyways. Okay. Now we are still, we are a long ways away from our target. So next job is to lower our orbit a little. We'll pull our periapsis down to, let me see, the apoapsis. We need to keep it, we need to stay higher though. But if we pull it down to below 60, maybe in the 50s or so, that should be a start and then we'll round it out. And this is the part where we're gonna need to bring in our poodle engine. So we're gonna turn it on and just actually It'd be best not to turn it on until we don't waste so we don't waste any fuel that we don't have to. Okay. We are have a nice rounded orbit. A nice flat orbit. We're on the right plane. Now we need to bring ourselves down so that we are close enough to the ship to actually contemplate docking. Nine minutes, we will do a one second pulse of the engines to lower our, our orbit a little. So our apoapsis is currently 68, and we want to drop it to around... Okay. 
here we go. Okay, the apoapsis, we're rotating it around. Come on, stop shaking. Stop shaking. You're the, ap the periapsis. It'd be really nice if we had some encounter calculations for our space station. Our station is sitting a lot lower. Let's take it down to 45. And then hopefully at our next orbit, which we're going to do a retro burn at the uh, periapsis to bring our apoapsis down closer to the space station too, which is catching up. It's catching up. So let's... Oh crap. Oh crap. Um, shoot. We're gonna run out of batteries. Okay, we're in trouble. Disable recycling. Shoot, I should have put solar panels on this thing. Gods, I didn't even notice how low on batteries we were. Um, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. Oh, shoot. You watch, I'm gonna kill these guys because I didn't bring enough friggin' batteries along. Actually, I do have one solution. There is one thing that can save these guys. The poodle, funny enough, yeah, I don't think there's any way we're gonna we're gonna save them. We have to dock with that station for them to survive. And I don't know when we're gonna actually have a docking encounter with this station. I screwed up, guys. Shoot, okay, we gotta go home. That's all we can do. Abort, burn for home. Son of a crap. You know, I might just redesign this. All right, let's see how much is that gonna take. That'll get us a almost returning periapsis. How much of a burn is it, 40 seconds? We have more than enough fuel for that. And that'll take us right to the atmosphere, perfect. Okay, so engine activate. And burning in 52 minutes for departure. I think I just missed my window. Is there a closer window? Can I leave here? Will that work? Yes, it will. It'll get me into a higher orbit, but that's still okay. Just takes a little bit more of a burn, but we have fuel to, fuel to spare. I should know better. It's always better to have frigging um, live and learn. Okay. Let's just hope there's enough left here with uh, the recyclers off. It was the biometric readings. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh, that was stupid of me. Okay, guys, here we go. Well, we might as well not leave any uh, garbage around uh, the moon. Oh, that was stupid of me. What was I thinking? That was so dumb. Oh, my word. Well, I learned a valuable lesson about power management. I should not have transmitted those results back until I was docked with the station. And I have no doubt you guys screamed the same thing at your computer screens while you watched this, which I am going to admit my failure. Uh, we'll redesign this with... I'm not sure if we redesign with solar panels or if we just don't foolishly... Um, well, that'll do. We'll use the uh, engines to slow down when we get a little closer. Okay. Quick saving. This is going to be touch and go, though. We hit Kerbin in... Let's see, our apoapsis. We are unfortunately taking the long way around. Wait, hold on. No, we're taking the short way around. I think we're going to hit our... I think we're going to go to Kerbin first. I sure hope so. Let's see how quickly. So we're going to need to slow down our approach to Kerbin, which is fine because that'll you that'll let us charge the batteries a bit more. We'll do that about here. So what we need is a maneuver that is going to raise my. Actually, it would be a sort of a. There we are. That's what we need. 36, there we are. And we also need to bring our 
apoapsis down a whole bunch. So if I do that maneuver, that'll get me lots of time running the uh, running our uh, engine, which should give us enough juice to get back to Kerbin and also make sure my re-entry isn't fatal, which what I will have included is a uh, small segment of me discovering that um, g-forces are a thing in Better Than Starting Mant. So, yeah, that was bad. Okay. Come on. Yeah, there we are. We're charging. Perfect. Charge those batteries. Let's also make sure this battery is actually off. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Just got to remember, 300 units of battery power are on that thing right there alone. And if I don't turn that on at the right time, terrible things will happen. Let's get the uh, computer controls locking me on here. And let's watch our uh, watch our numbers here. I can even go a little faster. It's no big deal. Out this far from curb, and it doesn't make much difference exactly when I do my maneuvers. I got lots of time to adjust them if necessary. So come on, periapsis out of the atmosphere. Oh, there we are. We have a real periapsis now, which is good. Oh, what a disaster this mission has been. Ah, I can't believe how badly I screwed up. So the next one will definitely have solar panels on it. Um, yeah. But right now, our only focus is making sure these guys get back alive. I can't believe I almost lost another mission due to battery power, for God's sakes. Okay. Okay. Probe core off, SAS off, RCS off. Quick save now that we're a little closer. Let's watch our batteries. That's the moon, isn't it? There's Kerbin. Okay. We're definitely going to need another burst of energy. Let's see, what do we want to do this time? We need to plan another maneuver that will bring down my peri my apoapsis, like so, and round out my, keep my orbit. Oh, except that's going to increase the time it takes to get home, isn't it? Is that increasing or decreasing my return time? All right, now let's no we because we need a. It is definitely problem that it is adjusting our orbit the way it is. But if we do a few more of these, it should buy us enough battery power to do the job. Okay. Lock it on. Charge those batteries some more nicely, which means our speed is dropping. Oop. We're going a little lower than I want it to go. Let's fix that by running the engine some more, because that's what we're doing. Okay, this is pretty much going to be it for engine power. We've got maybe one more round of uh, prayer, hopes and prayers are with uh, Lars and company here. Lars and Looney, you've got 1,200 battery left, 900 left, 15 minutes worth of flight time. It's touch and go at this stage. I'm tempted to run the rest of the juice out of the uh, engine here in just a minute. In fact, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do just to buy us a bit more time. Okay, so we need a apoapsis dropping, but not periapsis. 
That's the important thing. We don't want to make our periapsis go too much lower than it already is. This is all about just slowing ourselves down a little, which is just giving us a appropriate marker for that. It's right about there. I'm just going to kill the rest of the juice, give ourselves a few extra minutes worth of burn time, of flight time. <sighs> yeah, I reloaded from a quick save after that. I can't believe G-forces are actually in the game. That was a really... I mean, I suppose intellectually I knew that G-forces were a risk. Yeah. But, okay, well that's it. That's all the juice we're getting in that battery. Now it's just a case, oh, we're in just about in the atmosphere too. So we're almost at the point where, quick save. Holy crap, we're coming in fast. Dangerously fast. Just, just so you know, ordinarily this is not how, oh, and look at the G's on this thing. Oh God, this thing might rip itself apart. Oh God, no. Oh, no. I didn't even know that was possible. Well, shoot. Son of a crap. That was terrible. Drag shoots. There we are. Excellent. And then in just a second, I'm fat. Yes, I'm warping time. I know it's dangerous. I don't know exactly. Whoa! What the hell just happened there? All right, let's see what we got here. So are we going over the apoapsis? Not at this time, so I might actually be able to. Right, right, right. Let's just uh, use our... Let's see if we can actually uh, make our re-entry on this pass rather than on the uh, longer pass. Come on, retro. No, we're raising it. Now we're lowering it. Have we lowered it enough? I can't tell yet. I got one minute and some odd seconds to go before we know for sure. And we have a lot of monopropellant we can use up in the process. So, just hope we can use it up before uh, all hell breaks loose here, because all hell is about to break loose in just a minute here. Temperatures are rising rapidly. I'm just trying to get our periapsis low enough that we don't actually have to go back up over our apoapsis again. It would be really nice, wouldn't it? I don't think that's going to happen, though. <sighs> We're about to come down to the explosive part of reentry, which means it is time to get rid of time to get a hell out of dodge before all hell breaks loose. Oh crap! Did I? No, 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 no! Batteries. Shoot, that was close. No, our time to our periapsis is still dropping. Yeah. No, we're not quite gonna not quite gonna make it on this ang on this pass, I don't think. Come on, keep slowing down. All right, there goes our periapsis, but our apoapsis has to keep on dropping just because of the math of the situation, and it will go into the atmosphere. Okay, there go, there it goes. Okay, oh, never mind. We, problem solved. Problem solved. Excellent. I gave it enough uh, punch to keep it from uh, being an issue. There goes our apoapsis. I brought it all the way down in a few minutes before we got too high this time. 
the last pass was a bit of a problem. And I'm going to resist the urge to time accelerate, because that just that screwed me over. And that's the only thing I can think of that screwed me up in the last landing attempt. No time acceleration, period. Full stop, that's that's it, end of story. Let's just uh, ramp up these uh, parachutes. Ah, oh, hell. They've worked just fine for us every other time we've ever used them. I think I used up all my mono propellant, so let's hope that we are ready to go down. Well, let's get rid of that mess. Go away. Let's just hope it isn't us slamming into the side of a mountain or something, because it is dark. Always coming in in the dark. <sighs> Known time excel. None whatsoever. That's me just making sure I didn't leave it time accelerated. All right. Now you're going to miss a whole bunch of footage here. You'll see the uh, two crashes either now or either at the probably at the end of the episode. Um, G forces. Note to self: G forces are a thing. And 15 Gs apparently is enough to squash a. Kerbal. 7 minutes to landing. We're doing our final burn and drastically reducing the distance we have to travel before uh, or the time to landing. So Well, interesting. It was. It's been an. It was an interesting experiment. Oh crap! I missed it, didn't I? Frig. Oh well. <sighs> I needed to take that when I was still back up in orbit. Oh well. Too late for that. I'll catch it on a future flight. It's only fifty science, so it's not a big deal. Coming down to the point where I can deploy these parachutes. <sighs> we deploy them. I, I typically deploy them at uh, about 5,000 feet meters. I think that's going to give me plenty of time for my landing. It's really hard to tell right now. But below 200 meters per second works as well. And I think there's enough world below us for uh, to justify starting that dragging shoot process a little sooner. <sighs> so, yeah. I may have to do an unmanned probe just to palate cleanse after this. It's been a rough go, I have to say. There we go. That's the way it's supposed to bloody work. So we will see. I mean, you know, it's uh, I'm not sure what, what I would do. Maybe Moho. Moho could be fun. Um, or one of the moons of uh, uh, Duna or Eve. Um, just to see if I can get a probe even to them. That would be kind of cool. Um, let me know what you think. Um, certainly something unmanned would appeal to me at the moment. I'd, it would also be nice to get a man to Kerbin somehow. A landing on Kerbin. I've gotten... Yeah, I've returned a uh, goose sample from Kerbin, and I've returned an orbiting Kerbal from Kerbin. Or from Minmus, but uh, never a... Uh, manned flight, manned landing. So that would be the other thing to do. Um, I guess we'll see. Here we go. Whoa! Good grief! Kerbal physics for ya. Alright, well, that's it for now. Thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.